Let's look at the basic principle of energy dispersive spectroscopy or EDS analysis. The electron beam and sample interactions produce X-rays that are used by EDS for element analysis. Um, the electron beam dislodges the electrons of the sample atom, which are arranged in the order of increasing energy levels. So for example, electron present in the lower energy level is dislodged by the electron beam, leaving a vacancy at its place. The electrons in the higher energy levels jump in to fill these vacancies and the difference in the energies of the two energy levels involved in the electron transition is emitted out as x-rays. These x-ray series for different transitions are characteristic of an element. And this is important for the analysis part. The electrons in an atom are arranged in energy levels K, L, M, and N corresponding to principal quantum number 1, 2, 3, and so on. If the electrons in energy level 1, for example, is dislodged, the electrons from energy levels 2, 3, or 4 jump in to fill that vacancy, and the difference in energy is emitted as X-rays. The K series are named as K alpha, K beta, K gamma, or K delta, depending upon which levels are involved in transitions. And similarly, we have L series or M series corresponding to energy levels 2 and 3. We are now going to look at the EDS analysis of a copper wire sample. Um, the EDS acquires the image from the SEM. Uh, sorry if you see any glitches in the screen capture system. Um, we will pick few points for the electron beam to focus on the sample and analyze the X-rays produced at those points. The darker area indicates higher oxidation of copper as oxygen is lighter than copper and appears darker on the image. So we can see different elements popping up and this is the spectrum, the EDS spectrum, which is a plot of X-rays count coming from that point in the sample versus energy. A limitation of EDS system is that the energy peaks overlap among different elements. So we have to be careful of that and um, need to consider which elements make most sense given the context of our sample and analysis. So we turn off some of the elements which are not relevant. Zinc could be mixed with the copper wire and that is why it may be showing up here. The chloride could be coming from some salt, uh, you know, while handling the sample. These elements could be, you know, for because of the overlapping of peaks, carbon could be coming from the dirt or organic matter. So we expand on these peaks and we look at copper. It has the L alpha series around 0.9. KV and uh, we expand on it. So this is the L alpha for copper at around point nine. Look at this peak which corresponds to oxygen here. The K alpha series of oxygen at point five appears shorter. Uh, the concentration of the elements affects the height of the peaks. Higher the concentration, higher is the height. And this is the other peak for copper which corresponds to K alpha series around 8.04. All these peaks are uh, characteristic of the element and this small peak is coming from maybe the overlapping peaks here. So we see the two characteristic peaks of copper here corresponding to K-alpha and L-alpha series, and one peak for oxygen at around 0.5. So now we go to the other point, 0.2, which was darker. And again, we look at the elements. 
which are popping up here and we turn off the ones which are not relevant in the sense which are you know not making too much sense in our context right now and we focus on the copper and oxygen here again we look at the copper peak at point 0.9 and this time when we look at um, this little so when we look at oxygen it has much higher peak indicating higher concentration of oxygen at this point this is the K alpha for the copper here so thus we see how EDS helps in analyzing the element composition of a sample and level of oxidation on a copper wire in this particular sample.